Hey everybody and welcome to the first episode of VFX Studio. So the basis of VFX Studio is I'll show you guys a technique or effect and then explain how to do it. For the most part we'll be using FX Home's hit film. I'm using the demo for the ultimate version and it includes every feature and every effect and all that but it's limited to 30 second exports to YouTube and in standard definition. The demos for both the standard and the ultimate version can be found at these links here and for about two more weeks HitFilm Ultimate will be at a reduced price of $319. FX Home also offers HitFilm Studio containing HitFilm Ultimate, a green screen, hours of in-depth tutorials, and Action Essentials 2. It's priced at $650 and it can be found at this link here. And now let's take a look at today's effect. Alright, so I used two programs to do this effect. First was HitFilm to do all the masking and timing and also did the clip toss in that. Then I brought it into Sony Vegas and added all the muzzle flashes, dirt explosions, sparks. So as you can see here in HitFilm, I already have my entire project laid out. All this stuff has been placed appropriately and in the right timing situations. This footage was shot in an entire sequence spanning 8 minutes and all I did was run around and play all my parts without moving the camera. So here you can see that I have my three videos. First is me standing next to the car, second is me standing in the doorway, and then third is on the treadmill. Now you can see here if I turn on everything you won't be able to see it because none of the masks have been activated. These three buttons here represent different mask shapes. You can either choose a square, a circle, or a freehand mask. If I go over here and turn on the mask for the treadmill layer, you'll see that his area is confined to the space right next to the treadmill. So his path ends at the doorway, and that's all the space he needs. If I turn it on, you'll see that everything shows because the layer is being cut out of the treadmill. Masking can also be used to put a computer-generated object behind something in the real world. I'll show that in probably a later video, but if you see here that I turn on each individual layer, you can see that here's the treadmill guy, here is the door guy, and his space is only the door because that is the only part that needs to show. That's where he stays and he doesn't move anywhere else. And here is the car layer. The car layer is the background for everything else, so it does not need any mask because everything else is covering it. Let's turn on everything else and you'll see that the masks show through. Now we have all three characters in one environment and one setting. For the treadmill layer I had to apply a brightness and contrast because for some reason the camera changed the lighting automatically while I was shooting. So I just changed the brightness to 22 and the contrast to 10. Now another important aspect of masking is the feather. Without your feather your mask will appear very sharp and it just won't look good. To adjust your mask feather in hit film, go under mask and adjust your feather strength. I kept mine at around 12 pixels. And as you can see here, without the mask, you can see that there's a very sharp edge between the two pieces of footage. And by pieces, I mean my two layers, which is me in the doorway and me on the treadmill. Now the clip toss to myself was made by taking this footage right here of me tossing the clip into the air against a brown wall. Then I brought it into HitFilm, scaled and rotated it, and keyframed the position to throw it to myself as this person tosses it to this person. And I moved the entire video by keyframing. Keyframing can be activated by pressing the circle next to whatever trait it is, whether it's position, rotation, color, or whatever. Press the circle and it'll become green and then you're able to keyframe it. So now we're ready to make it look like the clip belongs there. So I brightened it using brightness and contrast, masked out everything but the clip, and then keyed out the brown using hue and RGB key, and added a blur effect since it's moving through the air. The shadow for the clip was made by duplicating the clip layer, moving the position down and to the left, and dropping the opacity. 
Now that the masking is finished, I exported the clip then imported it into Sony Vegas to put all the muzzle flashes and all the external effects. The audio for the clip was also mixed in here. Now all that's left is to add some color correction and the black bars on the top and bottom, and you're done. Coming this Thanksgiving is the HitFilm 1.1 update, which includes 2D motion tracking. You can find a tutorial for that in the link in the description below. But that's it for the first episode of VFX Studio. You can follow me on Twitter here for the notification of when the next episode comes out. I'm hoping maybe in a week and a half. Also in the comments below, please leave your critiques and suggestions for the next effect. Thanks a lot for watching, I'll see you guys later.